What's up, internet? So Cancun and Tulum, it's still one of my favorite destinations. It's my second time going and it is absolutely beautiful. Like the ocean just looks photoshopped. It's not real life. Isn't it like the easiest to drink tequila? No. Uh, it's good. I like Patron. <laughs> Cancun is the destination to go to if you're looking to relax on a beach, sip on a margarita, zip line, scuba dive, snorkel, run away from alligators, jump off cliffs. There's so many things to do there. And as usual, I tracked all my costs, so I'll be making a cost breakdown video soon. Our first stop in the morning was the Walmart, and some people call it the Little U.S. Embassy. You can pick up all the basic supplies you're gonna need at that Walmart and also book all the things you're gonna do. That's one of my favorite things about Cancun is that you can plan most of your stuff when you get there. Our goal for the first day was to drink tequila, hang out by the beach, hang out by the pool at the hotel, and relax. Honestly, I feel like we could have done just that for all five days and it would have still been an epic trip. For dinner that day, we went all out and got some fancy steak and that was food coma number one. Day two was scuba diving. If you've never been before, it is a awesome introduction. There's a training session in the morning where they train you with all the gear. Then we went out on a boat and we did two dives and each one lasting about 30 to 45 minutes. So the museum was really cool because there's a lot of statues, totally worth checking out and there was that full-size car that was under there oh, yeah. and then where are devices when you scuba dive completely shaved the mustache i had kept on uh, opening up the mask and water kept on coming in and i constantly had to like blow out my gopro stopped working just as we started the dives which is something i should have realized considering that my very first youtube video was literally about how the gopro hero 5 doesn't work deeper than 20 feet underwater stupid stupid for dinner our goal was to get out of the touristy zone and find something more local we ended up here and it was totally worth the venture out we completely went to town on this menu and immediately fell into food coma number two. That night was the night we were gonna go explore some nightlife, but then Jonathan started bleeding out of his ear. And we went downstairs to the lobby, got a doctor. Yeah, he gave me some steroids, antibiotic eardrops, and told me not to get into water. But I still got into water and yeah. <laughs> it got infected. <laughs> you blew your eardrum, which sounds really scary. When I tell people that, they go, is, that, is he permanently deaf? Basically, as you're going down underwater, you're supposed to do it at a very slow pace so that your ears can adjust. Yeah, I didn't do that. So by the time I got to the floor, my head was all, it felt like it was about to pop. That's what happens when you don't pay attention in <laughs> class. Would you go scuba diving again? Oh, absolutely. Don't let this scare you away from scuba diving though. It's a very safe sport. Although I did once run out of air at 90 feet underwater. As long as you pay attention and don't do anything stupid, scuba diving is a very safe sport. In terms of nightlife, there's this place that's really popular called Coco Bongo. We didn't get to go this time, but I went last time and it's this huge live performance show and I can't believe how many costumes they have. It's epic. It's definitely worth checking out if you've never been. And it's an open bar, so you know. Day three, we checked out of Cancun and off to Tulum. There's a couple parks in that area that are all popular and they're all a little bit different. Last time we went to Explore, which was super fun. Fun. And this time we went to Selha. At Selha, there's zip line, hammocks, there's a stingray encounter. How was the experience? The best Amazing. part of my trip. I want to die right now because I know that every experience after this is not going to be as good. The buffet and drinks are all inclusive in your admission, and they even have cliff jumping. They tell you not to do flips off the cliffs, but I kind of had to redeem myself after the last time I tried one. <laughs> After that, we headed to Tulum, and that's where we encountered the famous Mexican speed bumps called Topes. You'll be on the freeway the whole time, and then all of a sudden, these giant speed bumps will just appear on the road. We were getting into town pretty late at night, and we basically hit it full speed, yeah. and I'm pretty sure we jumped the car. Let's read some articles about how much people love these Topes. Topes are the worst part about driving in Mexico. Rip the wheels off your car. Everyone screamed for their life as we flew in the air. Holy sh**. Those topes rocked our world. Missing the speed bumps, conspiracy between mechanics and speed bump installers. Sent oblivious drivers clear through the roof. Bottom line, keep a lookout for these signs. We're in a, a, a Tulum. We're staying here. Hammock's not as comfortable as it looks, but it looks nice in video, so that's all that counts. I thought it'd be funny to fall off this hammock for the intro, and then I landed in a bunch of ants. Immediately after, I've got all these rashes on my stomach. Oh my God, I have so many bites. That was a stupid idea. The next morning, girls did yoga and had a massage while Jonathan and I kind of walked around, explored, and had a, a pretty intense tickle fight. It was pretty gnarly, not gonna lie. For real, stop, stop, don't do that. The hotel was awesome. We were right by the water. Little tip, if you're gonna book a hotel in Tulum, try to make sure it has air conditioning. Not having air conditioning there kind of sucked. Yeah. You know I mean, everyone yeah. had trouble sleeping the first night because we just wake up in the middle of the night drenched in sweat. Tulum, guys, everything is really out in the open. There's no shower door, so everyone is extremely uncomfortable right now. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Tatum is probably one of the most photogenic places I've ever seen in my life. We went to Paradise Beach. A lot of places to eat right on the beach. We got this little day bed. It was, it was more like a small mattress on the sand. Uh, the water is really great there. We drank a lot of Coronas because oh, yeah. I think that's where they film some of the Corona commercials or at least around there. That was definitely the most relaxing part of Tulu. Slow motion shots of Christina running on the beach. After Paradise Beach, we were gonna go to this place called Grand Cenote, which is kind of like the big touristy cenote. It's all over the internet, it's very popular. But they closed earlier than we thought. We asked the cab driver and he pointed us to uh, Casa Cenote, which was pretty cool. But that is where things got really exciting and we encountered a crocodile. It was pretty scary, it was terrifying in the water. <laughs> but that's its own video that we posted last week. You can check that out if you want. But cenotes are definitely a must do while you're oh, in Tulum, yeah. I think. If, if you're in Yucatan, sure, you gotta go to the cenotes. Yeah. Later that night, we kind of went to this main strip area where there's restaurants. They're nice restaurants, but they just geared towards tourists. Uh, everything was pretty upscale. This is the more touristy area, and this is the more local area. It's called El Pueblo de Tulum. We ended up going to the local area and that's when Jonathan whipped out his dance moves. You guys see that? We went around the area, got some drinks, got some food, uh, some really good tacos. Tulum is quiet, so it almost feels like you're gonna have trouble flagging down a taxi, but it's like every other car is a taxi, so we never had an issue flagging down a taxi there. So last day we went slightly south uh, and checked out this area for shopping. Every single portion of it it's a perfect background, Instagram heaven. It's very photogenic there, but it had very upscale beach vibes. It reminded me a lot of Malibu. And the price has also reminded me of Malibu. <laughs> Another popular thing to do in Tulum are the ruins. I saw that last year. It's pretty interesting. Learn a little bit about Mayan history. It's set up kind of like a museum though. It's like a walking guided tour. Uh, something you might want to consider doing. After Tulum, we needed to head back to Cancun for our flight and we stopped by Pa del Carmen. We only stopped there for about an hour, but I wish we had more time there. It was nice. Uh, Absolutely. Shops everywhere, then a museum and whatnot. I would say it's still a semi-touristy town. Cancun is like the core of tourist central. Yep. And then Palo Carmen was kind of like a, just saw somewhere in the middle. And then Tulum was still a little bit touristy, but pretty minimal uh, yeah. compared to the other two valleys. I got some souvenirs there and uh, Christina got a hammock, which is pretty cool. A lot of the hole in the wall looking shops, you should definitely try to bargain a little bit at least. And as I mentioned, we tracked every expense we spent the whole time we were there. So we will be making a cost breakdown video as usual. So keep an eye out for that if you're trying to budget out your trip. That's pretty much all we have for now. So we're about to have a tickle fight. <laughs>